Embulbul Catholic Dispensary is a faith-based health facility which is owned by the Catholic Diocese of Ngong and managed by the Capuchin Sisters of Mother Rubato. Capuchin Sisters of Mother Rubato started by Maria Francesca Rubato in 1885. The dispensary is strategically situated in Ololuangong, Kajiado County, to serve needy local communities who would otherwise not access quality, affordable health care. Our charism is to love God and to do good. That's why we are here to serve the needy physically and psychologically. Among the services we offer include general consultations from Monday to Saturday. Monday to Friday we open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And on Saturday we open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. We also offer specialist clinics such as TP Clinic on Tuesdays, Diabetic and Hypertension Clinic on Wednesdays, CCC Clinic on Tuesday, Thursdays, and a Nutrition Clinic on Fridays. We also offer eye clinic every last Friday of the month. At Mbulbul Dispensary, we strive to manage and control diseases in the surrounding communities using cutting-edge equipment, modern technology, and high-standard medical supplies. In our dental department, we have modern technology equipment. This is our dental unit. We have an autoclave machine for sterilizing, x-ray, among other machines. We do services such as extraction, fillings, root canal therapy, splinting, denture, crown and bridge, among other services. We have various services that we offer. We are doing immunizations, we are doing antenatal clinics, counseling and ultrasound services. We have immunizations every Monday and Thursdays that are baby friendly. We also do ultrasound services every Tuesdays and every Friday at affordable prices. Our modern laboratory is well equipped with modern machine and equipment that really aid in performing uh, quite a number of tests which entails biochemistry, serology, parastology, and we have HbA1c for diabetic patients, uh, phlebotomy, TB and HIV testing, and many more. We enroll HIV clients who are referred to various entry points. We operate from 8 to 5. We take like two to five minutes for a client, depending with the client's needs. We have HIV positive mothers whom we do the, who, are, who have HIV exposed infants, we call them HEI. We run them a program for two years. In our pharmacy, we are well equipped with a, a modern integrated computer system, which aid in dispensing. In our main store, we are also well equipped and stocked with the drugs from meds, which is our main supplier. Unapimwa vizuri, nikileta mtoto, anatibiwa vizuri, na diyo mimi upeda kukuja hapa hii Ebulbul Catholic Dispensary. Nimekua hii Bulbul for quite a, for many years now, na tumekua tukija hapa kwa sababu hii facility kwa karibu na sisi. Hile experience nimepata kutoka hapa, it's quite recommendable. Welcome to Imbulbul Catholic Dispensary. For more information, visit us or call us on 0726-332-430 or write us an email on info at mbulbulcatholicdispensary.org. You can also visit our website at www.mbulbulcatholicdispensary.org. We remain true to our motto as we endeavor to meet the medical, spiritual, and psychosocial needs of our clients. Welcome to a Bull Bull Catholic Dispensary. We care. God cure us. Yay! Capuchin TV Kitambulisho Katoliki
tunaona mtu ameketi katika kiti cha enzi mbinguni malaika wengi walimwabudu wakiimba pamoja tazama huyu ndiye ambaye ufalme wake ni wa milele kwa jina la baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu amen Neema ya Bwana wetu Yesu Kristu na upendo wa Mungu Baba na ushirika wa Roho Mtakatifu viwe nanyi nyote. Viwe pia nawe. Katika imisa tuombe kwa nia zifuatazo. Tunajiunga na Florence Nyamwaro kutoka Kisi akiomba uponyaji na pia akiombea watoto wake Jane, Julius, Po na Walter. Mwenyezi Mungu wajalie neema na baraka katika maisha yao. Tunajiunga na familia ya Lois Njoki Kariuki. Akiomba kwa ajili ya familia yake. Mwenyezi Mungu wajalie neema na baraka katika maisha yao. Ni ya tatu Tunajiunga na familia ya Achien Anonziata akiomba kwa ajili ya nia yake binafsi na pia akiombea familia yake Mwenyezi Mungu awajalie neema na baraka katika maisha yao Nia ya ine tunajiunga na Peter Gishohi akiomba neema na baraka kwenye maisha yake Mwenyezi Mungu azidi kumbariki na kumulinda. Ni tano tunaomba tunaombea wafuatao wapate kazi za kundumu kwenye miza hii. Agnes Kirata na Susan Jerry. Mwenyezi Mungu awajalie kazi ya kundumu maisha yao. Ni sita tunaomba kwa ajili ya wagonjwa wa ufuatao kwenye miza hii George Ombongo, Wilson Ombongo, Eric Omono Rapemo, Lucy Ngendo, Paul Daga na Collins Ombware. Mwenyezi Mungu wajalie uponyaji na afya jema. Ni ya mwisho tunaomba kwa ajili ya marehemu Joseph Robinson Gishohi. Pia tuombe uwai watoto waliofariki na roza ziko toharani. Tukiwa na hizo nia mbele ya tali yake Mwenyezi Mungu tukiri makosa yetu ili Mwenyezi Mungu atuwezeshe kuazimisha misa hii kwa njia ya Dugu zangu tukiri dhabi zetu ili tupate kustahilishwa kuadhimisha mafumbo matakatifu Wewe uliyetumwa kuwaponya wanaotubu moyoni Bwana huturumie Bwana huturumie Wewe uliyekuja kuwaita wakosefu Kristo uturumie. Kristo uturumie. Wewe uliyeketi kuume kwa Mungu Baba, ukituombea, Bwana uturumie. Bwana uturumie. Mungu Mwenyezi aturumie, atusamehe ndabi zetu, atufikishe kwenye uzima wa milele. Amen. Tuombe. E Bwana tunakuomba uyapokee kwa wema wa mbinguni maombi ya watu wanaokusihi ili wapate kutambua ya upasayo kutenda na wapewe ngufu ya kuyatimiza walio yatambua kwa njia Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo mwanao anayeishi na kutawala nawe katika umoja huo mtakatifu Mungu daima na milele
ta Samuel. Wazee wote wa Israeli walikutana pamoja. Wakamwendea Samuel huko Rama. Wakamwambia, "Angalia, we umekuwa mzee na wanao hawaendi katika njia zako. Basi tufanyie mfalme atuamue, mfano wa mataifa yote. Lakini neno hilo likawa mbaya machoni pa Samuel." Waliposema, "Tupe mfalme atuamue." Ne Samueli akamwomba Bwana. Bwana akamwambia Samueli, "Isikilize sauti ya watu hawa katika kila neno watakalo kuambia. Kwa maana hawakukataa wewe, bali wamenikataa mimi, ili nisiwe mfalme juu yao." Ne Samueli akawaambia wale watu waliotaka mfalme maneno yote ya Bwana. Akasema, "Mfalme atakaye wamiliki ninyi atakuwa na desturi hii." Atatoa wana wenu na kuwaweka kwake kwa magali yake kwa kuwa apanda falasi wake na watapiga mbio mbele ya magali yake na atawaweka kwake kuwa makinda juu ya elfu na makinda juu ya hamsini na wengine atawaweka walime shamba lake na kufuna mafuno yake na kufanyiza sana zake za vita na vyombo vya magali yake na biti zenu watatoa kuwa wafanyaji wa malhamu na wapishi na wakazi atatoa wakonde yenu na mashamba yenu ya misabibu na mizeituni yale yaliyo mazuri sana ili awape watumishi wake na atawatoza ushuru wa mbegu zenu na wa mizabibu yenu awape makinda wake na watumishi wake atawatoa watumishi wenu na wafanyakazi wenu na ngombe zenu walio wazuri sana na punda zenu ne atawatia katika kazi zake mwenyewe atawatoza fungu la kumi la makundi yake nanyi mtawakuwa watumwa wake nanyi mtalia siku ile kwa sababu ya mfalme wenu mliojichagulia bwana asiwajipu siku ile walakini hao watu watakataa kuisikiliza sauti ya Samueli wakasema sivyo hivyo lakini tunataka kuwa na mfalme juu yetu ili sisi nazi tuamue tena atoke mbele yetu na kutupigia vita atakayanena masikio mwa Bwana Bwana akamwambia Samueli isikilize sauti yao ukawafanyie mfalme neno la Mungu Wimbo wa katikati kiitikio fadhili zako e Bwana nitaziimba milele fadhili zako e Bwana nitaziimba Fadhili zako e Bwana nitazimba milele Fadhili zako e Bwana nitazimba milele Eli watu wale waijuao katika nuru ya uso wako kwa jina la kufurahi mchana kutwa na kwa haki yako utukuzwa fadhili zako
bidii mkuu ametokea kwetu na Mungu amewaangalia watu wake. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Bwana awe nanyi. Awe pia nanyi. Somo katika njili lilivyoandikwa na Marko. Utukufu kwa kwae Bwana. Baada ku Yesu akaingia tena Kapernaumu. Ikasikiwa ya kwamba Yesu alikuwa nyumbani. Wakakusanyika watu wengi, isimbaki nafasi hata mlangoni. Akawa akisema nao neno lake wakaja watu wamemleta mtu mwenye kupoza anachukuliwa na watu waine na walipo kuwa hawawezi kumkaribia kwa sababu ya makutano walitoboa ndari pale alipo kuwapo na wakiisha kulivunja waka literemusha ngondoro alilolilalia yule mwenye kupoza na Yesu halipo iona imani yao akawaambia akamwambia yule mwenye kupoza mwanangu umesamewa ndadi zako na baadhi ya waandishi waliokuwa wako huko wameketi wakifikiri mioni mwao Bona huyu anasema hivi anakufuru ni nani awezaye kusamehe dhambi isipokuwa mmoja ndiye Mungu Mara Yesu akafahamu rooni mwake kwamba wanafikiri hivyo nafsini mwao akawaambia Bona mnafikiri hivi mioni mwenu Fepesi ni vipi Kumwambia mwenye kupoza umesamewa na zako au kusema ondoka unjitwike ngondoro lako uende Lakini mpate kujua ya kwamba mwana wa damu anao amri duniani ya kusamehe dhambi hapo amwambia yule mwenye kupoza na kuambia ondoka unjitwike ngondoro lako uende nyumbani kwako mara akaondoka akanjetweka ngondoro lake akatoka mbele ya wote hata wakastaajabu wote wakamtukuza Mungu wakisema namna hii hatujawaipata kuiona kamwe hilo ndilo neno la Mungu Sifa kwako e Kristo. Basi hapa tunamuona mtu ambaye analetwa kwa Yesu. Alikuwa amepoza ili Yesu aweze kumwombea na amponye. Na tunaona kwamba inasemekana Yesu alipoona imani yao wale waliomleta alipoona imani yao maana yake ni kwamba huyu ndugu ameponywa kwa imani ya watu wengine ndio maana hata katika kanisa letu katoliki tunapoomba tisa mtoto mchanga yule hajafikia umri wa kukomaa ama wa kuamua huyo mtoto anabatizwa kwa imani ya kanisa kwa imani ya wazazi wake ama wazimamizi kwa hivyo imani ya wengine inaweza kusaidia mwingine aokoke na ndio maana kila wakati tunaombea roho za wale walio toharani sababu wao hawana uwezo kujiombea lakini sisi tuna uwezo kwa imani yetu tunaweza kusaidia ili waokoke Wayahudi waliamini kwamba ikiwa mtu ni mgonjwa ama anaumia kwa vyote vile ni kwa sababu ya dhambi Walikuwa wameunganisha mateso na dhambi kwa hivyo 
Nikana kwamba anaona huyu mtu alikuwa amepoza, alikuwa anaumia kwa sababu ya dhambi zake. Na hata wao walikuwa wanaamini hivyo. Hata mwenye kungonjeka anaamini hayo. Na Yesu kama angeendelea kumponya bila kumwambia dhambi zako zimesamewa, labda huyu mtu hata angeamini kama atapona kwa sababu alikuwa anaamini kwamba maumivu alionayo ugonjwa alionao ni kwa sababu ya dhambi zake hiyo ndio ilikuwa dhana ya wa wayahudi wakati huo lakini hapa tunajiuliza je ni kweli matezo tunayoyapata hapa duniani ni kutokana na dhambi kumbuka yule ayubu ambaye ni mtumishi wa bwana na alikuwa anaishi akimpendeza mungu kwa njia zozote zile paka Mungu anamwita mtumishi wangu mwaminifu Ayubu. Aliteseka sana. Lakini Ayubu hakuwa na hakuwa tena jambo ambalo lilimkasirisha Mwenyezi Mungu. Hata Mungu alikuwa anajivunia kujitambulisha na huyo Ayubu. Na mbona aliteseka hivyo? Na hakuwa na makosa. Ili tujua kwamba si kila wakati tutateseka kwa sababu ya dhambi zetu. Tutambue aina mbili ya kuteseka. Kuna kuteseka kimwili na kuna kuteseka kiroho bila shaka mateso ya kiroho yanapitokana na dhambi inaweza kuwa ni dhambi ya mtu binafsi ama inaweza kuwa ni dhambi ya watu wengine the so called the social sin wakati ambapo kuna corruption katika inchi wengi wanateseka wale ambao hata wakuchangia katika hilo the social sin kwa hivyo tuseme haya kama ni kuteseka kimwili si lazima iwe ni dhambi kwa mfano, chukua mfano wakati kumekuwa na mtingiziko wa ardhi. An earthquake. Watu hufa, watu huumia, watu tezeka, mali uharibika. Je, ni dhambi ya nani ili kutokee mtingiziko wa ardhi? Hii inatuonyesha kwamba physical suffering is not necessarily from our sins. Kuna zile mateso tunayoyapata kupitia kwa calamities ama matukio yale ya anga ambapo hatujachangia chochote. Kwa hivyo tutenganishe kutezeka kwa kimwili mara nyingi inawezekana tunaweza tezeka kwa dhambi zetu lakini pia inaweza tunaweza tezeka kwa kupitia kwa manjanga ya kimaumbile ya kidunia ama kwa mabandiliko yale ya anga. Kwa mfano wakati kunaweza kosa kunyesha, kuna ukame watu wanakufa njaa wanateseka mifuko wao wanakufa nani amechangia kuwe na hali ya hali ya, ya ukame si mimi binafsi njapo kwa kwa njia moja au nyingine tunaweza sema asa nyakati hizi wanadamu wamechangia kwa kuharibu mazingira mazingira asa inaitwa global warming pia inaweza changia manjaka kama hayo kwa hiyo tutenganishe hilo lakini tunaona kwamba alipokuja amesamewa. Huyu mtu hakuwa anajiweza. Hakika ameweza amebebaniwa na watu waine. Ishara ya kwamba wale ambao mnatanzama mpira, mnaonanga mchezaji akiumia katika uwanja. Kuna wale ambao wanaingia kwa uwanja mbio mbio kama ameumia sana na ile stretcher. Inashikwa na watu waine analala hapo. Kwa hivyo ni mtu ambaye anjiwezi huyu. Amebebwa namna hiyo. Anjiwezi, amepoza hata kuketi hawezi. Akaletwa na kulikuwa na watu wengi sana katika hiyo nyumba Yesu alipokuwa hawakupata nafasi walibomoa ndari ama paa wakamteremusha ili aweze kumfikia Yesu Yesu akamwambia ondoka chukua ngondoro lako uende nyumbani mwako tukiweka imani yetu kwa Kristu Injiapo kwa tutapitia mengi hata kama ni maumivu ya uofu na dhambi ituweke katika hii hali ya kutonjeweza neema ya Mungu inatosha ya kwamba Mungu ana uwezo wa kutufanya tuamuke tena katika unyonge wetu katika hali yetu ya kutoweza kufanya chochote God Jesus has the power to make us bounce back to life to activity kwa hivyo neema ya Mwenyezi Mungu inatosha. Na tunjiulize, je, inazafikia wapi ili mtu labda ama roho ya mtu ifikie kiasi cha kuposa namna hii? 
inaweza tokea kwamba mtu ame, anaingia kwa hofu kiasi ya kwamba you know, amekuwa paralyzed amepoza anjiwezi katika somo la kwanza tunaona wana wa Israeli tangu walipookolewa injini Misri Mungu alikuwa kiongozi wao na waliweka hagano na Mwenyezi Mungu mtakuwa taifa langu nami nitakuwa Mungu wenu na ikawa kila wakati Mungu ndiye anayewachagulia kiongozi yule atakaye waongoza na ukiongozi alikuwa anaongoza akiongozwa na Mwenyezi Mungu siku ya leo wameamua wame wataki kuongozwa na wale Mungu amewapatia wamemkataa Samueli wanataka kiongozi wao akunjichagulia ili wafanane na mataifa yale mengine kiongozi ambaye atakuwa ni rais wao wao na majeshi ya kunjipigania miaka hiyo yote Mungu amekuwa akiwapigania sasa anataka kunjipigania wao wenyewe kwa wenyewe kunjiongoza wao kwa wenyewe kwa wenyewe na ndio Samueli anamwendea Mwenyezi Mungu anaambiwa wacha kulia mwanangu wanapokukataa si wamekataa ni mimi wamekataa sababu ni mimi kiongozi wao ni mimi wamekataa si wewe na akawaambia watamchagua mfalme na nafikiri walichagua ni Sauli na aliwapitishia njia ngumu sana ya maisha. Kambiwa atachukua mashamba yenu, atawatesa, atafanya mambo au atawatumikisha, atawadhurumu mambo kama hayo. Kwa hivyo tunaona kwamba ili mtu aweze kufikia hali kama hii ya kupoza ni yule mtu ambaye amejikata na neema yake Mwenyezi Mungu. Yule mtu ambaye anasema sitaki kuongozwa na Mwenyezi Mungu nataka kuongozwa na fikira zangu nataka kuchishika njia zangu niende kivyangu. Bali na Mwenyezi Mungu kuna shida. Kumbuka Yona halipo tumwa na Mwenyezi Mungu aende kule ni Nevi. Akaamua hata aende atashike njia yake akaenda kule alikuwa anataka kwenda. Lakini bahari ikachafuka ikaona kwamba wale ambao walikuwa na safari nayo watamtupa baharini. Kwa hivyo alikuwa anamtoroka Mwenyezi Mungu. Yona alitambua kwamba bali na Mwenyezi Mungu kuna taabu na shida na mangaiko lakini karibu na Mungu kuna utulifu, kuna usalama, kuna amani. Kwa maana mshowe akabadilisha nia. Mungu akamweka kwa njia nyingine, akamgeuza na akaenda katika ile njia na akatolea. Kwa hivyo dhambi inazotufikisha hapo na kile ambacho kinazotufanya tuende njia mbaya ni maamuzi yetu. Maamuzi yetu ya kwamba Mungu uziendelee kuwa usalama wetu, Mungu uziendelee kuwa mlinzi wetu. Wacha tuenende katika njia zetu bila mwongozo wako. Hiyo ndiyo inaweza fanya nafsi ama roho ya, ya mtu ifikie kiasi kama hiki cha kuposa kiasi ya kwamba huyo mtu ana neema Mwenyezi Mungu. Awezi akatenda lolote ambalo ni nzuri. Awezi hata ajui upendo wa Mungu ni nini, awezi akapenda wale wengine. Ni mtu ambaye ajui chochote kile ambacho kinaweza wapendeza wale wengine anataka kwenda kivi yake. Kwa hiyo tuombe sana ili neema ya Mwenyezi Mungu izidi kutuongoza na tuombe tu wanyenyekevu kila wakati tujiweke chini ya ulinzi wa Mwenyezi Mungu. Tusipende sana kujitawala kwa sababu bali na Mungu kuna shida na mangaiko karibu na Mungu kuna utulifu, kuna usalama na kuna amani.
Salini ndugu ili sandaka yangu ni nikumbaliwe na Mungu Baba Mwenyezi. Bwana pokea sadaka mkononi mwako kwa sifa na utukufu wa jina lake. Na pia kwa mafaya yetu sisi na mafaya ya kanisa lake lote. E Bwana tunakuomba dhabiu yetu sisi taifa lako ikupendeze. Utulete utakatifu Itupatie na hayo tunayoomba kwa uchaji kwa njia ya Kristu Bwana wetu. Amen. Bwana awe nanyi. Awe pia na. Inweni nioyo. Tumeinua kwa Bwana. Tumshukuru Bwana Mungu wetu. Ni vyema na haki. Kweli ni vyema na haki tendo la kufaa na la kuleta wokofu. Tukushukuru wewe daima na popote. E baba uliye mtakatifu kwa njia ya mwanampenzi Yesu Kristu. Neno wako ambaye kwa njia yake uliumba vitu vyote. Ndiye aliyetumwa kwetu kama mokozi na mkombozi. Akafanyika mwili kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu akazaliwa na Bikra. Kwa kuwa alitaka kutimiza mapenzi yako na kukupatia taifa takatifu alipanua mikono yake alipoteswa msalabani ili aangamize mauti na kudhihirisha ufufuko kwa sababu hiyo sisi pamoja na malaika na watakatifu wote tunatangaza utukufu wako tukisema kwa sauti moja mtakatifu 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 Bwana Mungu wa majeshi bingu na dunia zimejaa utukufu wako hosana juu mbinguni barikiwa anayekuja kujinga hosana juu mbinguni E Bwana kweli o mtakatifu na chemichemi mtakatifu wote tunakuomba uvitakatifuze vipaje hivi kwa nguvu ya roho wako ili viwe kwetu mwili na damu ya Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. Yeye alipotolewa na kuingia kwa hiari katika mateso yake. Alitoa mkate, akakushukuru, akaumega, akawapa fuasi wake akisema, "Twaeni mule nyote." Ho ndio mwili wangu utakaotolewa kwa ajili yenu. Vivyo hivyo baada ya kula akitoa kikombe na kukushukuru tena aliwapa wafuasi wake akisema Twaeni munywe nyote hiki ndicho kikombe cha damu yangu damu ya ngano jipya na la milele itakaye mwingi kwa anchili yenu na kwa anchili ya wengi kwa maendeleo ya dhambi fanyeni hivi kwa ukumbusho wangu ni fumbo la imani Kristo alikufa Kristo alifufuka Kristo atakuja tena Kwa hiyo e Bwana tunapoadhimisha ukumbusho wa kifu na ufufuko wake mwanao tunatolea mkate uzima na kikombe cha wokofu na kushukuru kwa kuwa umetustailisha kusimama mbele yako na kukutumikia. Pia tunakusihi kwa unyenyekevu ili kwa kushiriki mwili na damu ya Kristu tukusanywe na Roho Mtakatifu tupate kuwa njama moja. E Bwana ulikumbuke kanisa lako lililo enea popote duniani. Ulikamilishe katika mapendo pamoja na Baba Mtakatifu wetu Francisco na skofu wetu Philip Anyolo na wote 
Wakumbuke pia ndugu zetu waliofariki dunia wakiwa na tumaini la ufufuko na maremu wote waliofariki dunia katika huruma yako. Wapokee kwenye nuru ya uso wako. Tunakuomba uturumie sisi sote ili pamoja na Maria Bikira mwenye heri mama wa Mungu na mtakatifu Yosefu mume wake huyo Bikira mitume wenye heri na watakatifu wote waliopendeza tangu kale tustahili kushiriki uzima wa milele na kukusifu na kukutukuza kwa njia mwanao Yesu Kristu kwa njia yake na pamoja naye na ndani yake wewe Mungu Baba Mwenyezi katika umoja wa Roho Mtakatifu napata heshima yote na utukufu milele na milele. Amen. Kwa kulitii angizo la mokozi wetu na tukifuata mafundisho yake ya kimungu tunadhumbutu kusema Baba yetu ulie mbinguni jina lako litukuzwe falme wako ufike utakalo ulifanyike duniani kama mbinguni utupe leo mkato wetu wa kila siku tusamehe makosa yetu kama tunavyowasamehe na sisi waliotukosea usitie katika kishawishi lakini utopoe maovuni e bwana tunakuomba utopoe katika maofu yote Utujalie kwa imani maisha ni mwetu kusudi kwa msaada wa huruma yako tuopolewe daima na dhambi wala tusifadhaishwe na jambo lolote tunapotazamia tumaini lenye heri na ujio wa mokozi wetu Yesu Kristu kwa kuwa ufalme ni wako na nguvu na utukufu hata milele E Bwana Yesu Kristu uliyewaambia hame tume wako amani na waachieni amani yangu na wapa uzitanzame ndani zetu ila tu imani ya kanisa lako upende kulijalia amani na umoja kama yalivyo mapenzi yako na yeishi na kutawala milele na milele Amen. Amani ya Bwana iwe daima nanyi Iwe pia na Mwana kondoo wa Mungu uondoe dhambi za dunia utuhurumie Mwana kondoo wa Mungu uondoe dhambi za dunia utuhurumie Mwana kondoo wa Mungu uondoe dhambi za dunia utujalie Tanzama kondoo wa Mungu tanzama aondoaye dhabi za ulimwengu heri yao ilialikwa kwenye karamu ya mwana kondoo Bwana sitaini ndiye kwangu lakini sema neno moja tu Mwili na damu ya Kristo situlinde tupate uzima wa milele
chemichemi ozima katika mwanga wako tunako tunaona mwanga Sandeni sana kwa kushiriki hii misa na kwa kufanikisha misa kwa imbaji wenu na watakia mwe na siku njema Tuombe E Mungu Mwenyezi tunakuomba kwa nyenyekefu uwafanye hao unawalisha kwa sakramenti zako wa kutumikie pia kwa mwenendo una unakupendeza kwa njia ya Kristu Bwana wetu Amen Bwana awe nanyi awe pia nami Mungu Mwenyezi apende kuwalinda na kubariki kwa jina la Baba na Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu. Amen. Endeni na amani. Tumshukuru Mungu. Tina malia Kapuchin TV huduma katoliki ya uinjilishaji Na pia nawashukuru tena kwa support unapatia Kapuchin TV ile support tunapatia Kapuchin TV ni muhimu sana kwa sababu kazi wanafanya ya kuhubiri njini kote mimi siwezi hata wewe kwa sababu una ujuzi lakini hao kwa kuwasaidia tunafanya hiyo kazi tuendelee kufanya kazi payable number 510678 account name 
Caps TV. You are watching Capuchin TV. For any complaints, comments, or compliments on our programming, you can either write to us on info at capuchintv.co.ke or you can call us directly on 0717-424-866. Your complaint shall be addressed within seven days. Remember to keep a copy of your communication with us. Keep watching Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. We are the best technical training institute. We are holistic. We offer quality technical, vocational, and entrepreneurial training. We are Sagana Technical Training Institute. It is a technical training institute run by the Consorata missionaries. We are also registered by TVETA, the body that is governing the technical training institute. We offer holistic education, that is the academic part, and practical, and also we accompany the students spiritually so that the people that we form they may come out as holistically formed, not only workers but faithful and uh, sincere people who will do their work well and they will also be able to meet the target depending on the customer's need. We specialize in marketable engineering specialties which include electrical, mechanical and automotive engineering. We also offer competitive training in welding fabrication building and construction including masonry and carpentry, printing technology and tailoring. We have three levels of training. That is the diploma level, craft certificate level, artisan certificate level. The for qualification for diploma is a C minus. Craft certificate is a D and a D plus. For you to qualify to do artisan certificate, you must have a D minus. We are also a center for grid test. Uh, examined by NITA, and all our examinations are from NEC. The institute is fully fledged with capacious workshops, machinery, and equipment. Enjoy your learning in a serene environment with adequate lecture halls, hostels, and modern ICT facilities. We have a, a qualified faculty, well trained, our workshops are equipped, and uh, we are modernizing them so that we're able to move with the current technology. The environment for the training is very conducive. We have a very big compound. We also participate in co-curricular activities because most of the sports facilities are available. We have excellent boarding facilities, which we are able to have students from all over the country. That's one advantage of training with Sagavan uh, Technical. We have a very vibrant student community, not only from the greater center, but from the greater Country. We are located along Sagana Kagio Road, 500 meters from Sagana Town in Kirunyaga County, next to Sagana Police Station. Sagana Technical Training Institute is well secured. We are next to the police station. That uh, confirms that the security is good and uh, our students are taken care of. The school is very, very, very strict on uh, safety. You have to wear all your overalls, you have to have short hair. We don't have to, you know, anything that can lead to accidents is very, is taken very, very seriously. When you are a new student, the first thing you are introduced to when you come to the workshop are the rules, yeah? So the school is very, very strict when it comes to safety in the workshops. Our admission intakes are open in January, May and September every year. We accept all the denomination, not only Catholic, we accept the Protestant, we also accept the Muslim and other faiths because being a, a religious institution, we want to form people to go out there to work and we know that we are all serving one God, that's why we accept all of them. Being technical school, we also accept both men and women 
to train with us. Join us today for holistic formation. It is simple. Right to the principal Sagana Technical Training Institute, P.O. Box 24, Code 10230, Sagana, or call us on 0728956852. You can also apply or make inquiries by sending an email to info at saganatechnical.ac.ke or principal at saganatechnical.ac.ke There is an advantage of training with Sagana Technical Training Institute. We have uh, well equipped workshops, uh, we have well qualified faculty and all our workshops have a production unit that is the student is able to learn and also have hands-on skills in most of the courses. Also we offer boarding facilities and being founded in a Christian foundation, we also walk or journey with the student. We give them moral support and uh, through the, the, the network of the church, we also support our students uh, psychologically, socially, because most of our young people today are facing a myriad of challenges which we try to help them so that they become good people. So apart from training, we also f form the students morally socially and also spiritually for more details about the institute visit our website at www.saganatechnical.ac.ke after training with us we we'll also offer attachment for those who finishes with us we give them at least three months to train with us so that after that we can be able to recommend them to different companies when they call us and different institutions that are working with us in collaboration. The skills that I've actually gained here are good enough, you know, to go out there and start something on my own and actually even train others in, this, uh, in, in, in the area. Welcome to Sagana Technical Training Institute and experience our uniqueness in prayer education and work. Sagana is the pl best place to be when it comes to offering technical courses. So everybody is welcome. Feel free. Um, the tutors are, are ready to help you. And uh, this is where you get the best. Yeah, They are very, very committed to see you through and to see you gain the skills that you actually need for the courses that you want to take. So welcome. Sagana is the best place to be. Mpendwa muumini, heri njema na baraka tele za mwaka mpya kwako na wapendwa wako kwa ukarimu na ufadhili wako kwetu. Injili inasonga mbele. Msimu mwingine wa baraka na neema za sakramenti mbalimbali za kanisa umeanza. Wanao tufungulia sherehe za mwaka huu ni wachungaji na waumini wa vikarieti ya kitume ya Isiolo. Nam, Jumamosi hii Kapuchin TV Tutainjilisha kutoka katedrali ya mtakatifu Yosebio Isiolo mjini Itakuwa ni adhimisho la daraja takatifu ya upadri wa Shemasi Dennis Munene Miriti na Shemasi Charles Njue Moriongi Ibada ya takatifu ya misa itaongozwa na mwashamu wa askofu Anthony Ireri Mokobo kuanzia saa 4 asubuhi Kapuchin TV Tunawapongeza mapadri wate ule munene miriti na njue muriongi pamoja na familia nzima ya vikarieti ya isiolo. Endelea kutazama Kapuchin TV. Kitambulisho 
katoliki. Kutoa ni moyo usambe ni tajiri hapa katika